What's up? Welcome back to my channel, Detroit Poker. In this video, we're going to be talking about the straddle. The goal of this video is to kind of give you some information to arm yourselves with before you go out to your next live poker game. Straddling is pretty common in live poker games, so I just want to give you the basics. Uh, before we get into the video, I would like to point out that I'm going to have new merchandise dropping. So if you want to contribute to the channel, take a look at their website, DetroitPoker.net. And also, if you want to take your game to the next level, you can definitely hire me for some private one-on-one -on -one coaching. And you don't even have to have your own hand histories. I have thousands of hand histories that we can go through one-on-one -on -one together to work on your thought process. So it, with that being said, uh, let's move on to the topic of the video. So this video is aimed at recreational and inexperienced players who are trying to become profitable and plug leagues. So let's talk about the different types of straddles. Uh, first and foremost, we have the under the gun straddle. Uh, generally speaking, straddles will oftentimes be two times the big blind, but some card rooms allow you to vary the sizing up to a capped limit. Like some card rooms will have a straddle up to $20, a straddle up to $50, up to $100. At our card room, if you straddle at a 1-2 game, it's 5 bucks. If you straddle at a 2-5 game, it's 10 bucks. It's fixed, okay? So how this works is the player under the gun puts a blind. It's basically like a third blind in before they see their cards, and the action will start to the left of the person that straddles. The action then works its way around the table until you have the last say preflop. So if no one raises, you can check your option or you can raise yourself. The next type of straddle that we're going to talk about is the button straddle. Pretty much exactly the same as the under the gun straddle, except it's on the button. And oftentimes this will be confusing because the dealer sometimes doesn't announce the straddle. And even if they do, people aren't paying attention. The action generally is going to start to the left of the person that straddle. In this case, if you straddle on the button, small blind is the first person to act preflop. Generally, the action starts under the gun. These people are autopiloting. So under the gun just starts doing whatever. And, you know, you can see how sometimes the game can get screwed up because of the button straddle. Some card rooms complicate this even further by starting the action on a button straddle with under the gun. And then it goes all the way around to cut off. And then it skips over the button to small blind, big blind. And then it goes to the button. <laughs> That's a mouthful just to say that. Uh... I'm getting kind of tilted just thinking about it. I have students that play in card rooms that that's how the straddle goes. And I think it's kind of stupid. And I don't know why anybody does it like that, but whatever. So the next type of straddle would be the Mississippi straddle. Uh, this is less common than any of the other types. And basically you can straddle from any position on the table, excluding the small blind and the big blind. And position has precedence. So the person with the button has the precedence over everyone else to straddle and in descending order of position. So the cutoff has the next precedence and then the hijack and whatever. So if under the gun wants to straddle and button says, no, I'm straddling under the gun or buttons shit supersedes the under the gun straddle, right? And this can also screw up the game because like if somebody in middle position straddles, then it starts on the hijack or whatever. You can see how people are going to be folding out of turn and it's, it makes everything all goofy. So now that we've discussed the types of straddles involved, first and foremost, the straddle is going to increase the stakes just to keep it simple. Let's just say the straddle is double the big blinds. Now you're not playing a one, two game anymore. You're playing a two, four game. Basically. Now you're sitting there with 50 big blinds instead of a hundred big blinds. If somebody raises, it's going to be a bigger raise size than it would be if you hadn't put the straddle on. Example being, let's say that you're under the gun, you straddle, you look at ace king under the gun one limps and then a person in the hijack raises the button calls let's say he raises 15 bucks the button calls 15 now you want a three bet with ace king well now you got to make it a lot bigger right instead of you know normal raise might be seven to ten bucks you know the raise in the straddle might be 15 20 bucks okay so if you're going to play this pot it's going to cost you more pre-flop and naturally it's going to cost you more post-flop so if you might normally have a three street hand where you could bet flop bet turn shove river now it's going to be like bet flop shove turn sometimes even you know it might be multi-way you might just have to shove the flop so the game's going to play a lot bigger and you can win more money but you can also lose more money uh, faster so it's higher variance more of a roller coaster ride as far as the under the gun straddle is concerned uh, i just want to point out something the under the gun straddle will probably generate some action but you're kind of like putting your neck on the line to generate this action. So it better be worth it 
And the only way to really make it worth it is if everyone else is straddling also. So like you could ask the table, hey, you guys want to do a round of straddles. If every single person on the table agrees to do a round of straddles, then yeah, I might consider doing an under the gun straddle. But if I'm the only one that's doing it, um, I'm not going to under the gun straddle. Hardly ever, right? And I would encourage you to do the same. If you do under the gun straddle, uh, keep this in mind. Don't defend your straddle with garbage hands. If you straddle under the gun and you see the flop and you call somebody's raise, you're probably going to be all in, you know, by the turn and you better have a good hand to defend your straddle with. And that's exactly what I don't see people doing. <laughs> people, um, generally defend their straddle with garbage all the time a recreational player. So, uh, the button straddle, let's talk about that. Um, a lot of people think that the button straddle will generate action. However, a lot of times the people that are button straddling are aggressive opponents and they understand the advantage that the button provides and they're trying to exploit that advantage by putting a straddle on. And what they'll often do is raise their option when they straddle the button very frequently. And while you could think that this would be good for the game, it sort of does just the opposite, in my opinion. If you're at a 1-2 game and somebody's straddling the button and they're aggressive, uh, there's going to be a lot of players at that table that are recreational players that are risk averse that you know this is the smallest stakes that you can play live poker is generally one two and the money that these people are playing with sometimes represents a lot of money to them so they don't want to just throw money around okay so the button straddle kind of hurts the game because a lot of people tighten up when the button straddle is on like they don't play those they don't limp those garbage hands that they would normally do because now it costs them more than twice as you know twice as much to limp and then you got this guy who keeps raising and so what it does in turn is just it tightens the game up and then people don't gamble as much right so that's kind of like the opposite of what you want to do and then just to kind of shine a little more light on this subject like i used to button straddle a lot and I've kind of since changed my mind about the subject only because I talked to, you know, a couple of friends of mine and I just kind of changed my opinion about the button straddle. I was having people limp in and call me with hands as good as like pocket tens, pocket jacks. I've had people limp call me with queens, uh, ace queen suited, ace king suited. These are the type of hands that are limping in and calling my raise. And how did I find this out? Because I, you know, I would put the straddle on and then a couple people would limp and I'd look at, oh, ace 10 suited. Man, that's a pretty good hand to have in a button straddle. I'm going to cut a raise. And then lo and behold, I cut a raise and either somebody limp re-raises me and sandbags me and then I have to fold or I raise ace 10 suited and, you know, bet two streets and get called and, and lose to ace queen, okay? That's what it's doing to the game. It's making people tighten up and play better cards and people aren't gambling as much. People are afraid to jump in there because they don't want to get pounded with a raise and whatever. And so I don't think the button straddle is good for the game. Uh, the Mississippi straddle, um, I'm not really going to talk too much about the Mississippi straddle, but basically uh, it used to be offered in the card room I play at, but just for lack of a better term, it's just so much fuckery with this Mississippi straddle. Like no one understood whose shit superseded whose shit. Like they didn't know who had precedence. Like button would try to straddle, and then under the gun would try to straddle, and they didn't understand who was who had the you know the priority, and the, it always had to be explained to people, and then people were straddling in like middle position, and no one knew whose turn it was. It was more trouble than it was worth. It's just stupid. So, I don't I don't have anything good to say about the Mississippi straddle. It's just dumb, and it creates a bunch of confusion. Now, if you're playing at a table full of guys that are very well seasoned at poker, I think everybody's going to know whose turn it is and stuff like that. But like one, two tables are not like that. Uh, and it's pretty common that at a one, two table, at least half the people sitting there don't even know what the fuck is happening at all. Like they don't know what's going on. So uh, Mississippi straddle is probably very, very bad for the game. It's going to be real confusing for a lot of people. A lot of people folding out a turn, whatever. So let's talk about the next point is like kind of the pros and cons of straddling. I'm just going to give you some information to, you know, think about, think about it like this. If you're a recreational player, this is, this is what this list is for. If you're a recreational player, a good thing about straddling for a recreational player is it kind of takes away the ability of the professional or the solid regular player to put you in a blender post flop. Okay. So if you put the straddle on and this semi pro or whatever could normally just barrel you and put you in the blender, right? Well, now the stacks are so shallow, it doesn't really matter. Like, he can't barrel you because you'll be all in on the flop of the turn. So there is no barreling. 
he can't like put you to the test and make you fold a better hand or whatever. So if you have a good hand and he's not going to be able to push you off of it. Okay. Uh, the next benefit of straddling is kind of just like I said before, it generates action. Uh, it gives people more money to fight for and a lot of people are willing to, you know, go to war. Another benefit for a recreational player, I guess, is that you can win more money much more quickly. But double-edged sword, add this to the con list, and you can lose money very fast as well. If you're not comfortable with, you know, large swings and high variance and whatever, then straddle is no good for you. It's another bad thing about straddle. Now, this is all operating under the assumption that you're playing correctly if you straddle. And what I mean by that is, like, what is correct to play if you're going to straddle? Like, let's talk about it in terms of the under the gun straddle. If you straddle under the gun and your opponent raises and you look down at anything but a very good hand, you shouldn't be defending that straddle because you're going to a flop in a bloated pot out of position with mediocre cards. It's not a good way to start off a poker hand. And that's where most recreational players go wrong is they straddle and they defend way too wide and they end up getting into all sorts of dicey, sketchy spots after the flop. The advantage that a recreational player would have over somebody that was better than them post-flop is now negated because you're you're just entering the pot and putting yourself in a situation. You're you're bringing a knife to a gunfight, okay? That's what it is, basically. To sum up, uh, I would say, basically, uh, you don't need to straddle at a 1-2 or 1-3 game to beat it, okay? It's just unnecessary risk. So my advice to you would be don't straddle, just ever, and it's not going to hurt you. But if you are inclined to straddle, uh, I mean, the button straddle is pretty good for you, I guess. And the under-the-gun straddle is okay as long as everyone else is doing it. But I would just avoid straddling. If you're serious about winning the game, just avoid straddling. It's just one more spot that you're going to be leaking money if you're putting straddle on all the time, um, in general. So that's my thoughts about it. Um, uh, don't forget to support the channel. Visit my website, DetroitPoker.net. Take a look at this new merchandise. It's going to be dropping soon. Also, uh, if you'd like to, you can hire me as a, a private coach to help you get on the way to more profitable times at the poker table. Drop me an email, livepokerplayer8 at gmail.com, or visit the website for more information. So anyways, uh, take a look at some of my other content. I'm going to put some videos on, on the end screen here, and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.